Hello, Captains, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. We are continuing our Northeast Megalopolis bush trip. Not really a bush trip, but it is called a bush trip, so that's what we're doing. We are currently on leg number seven. Estimated time and route is 24 minutes. We're in the Diamond DA-62 twin-engine aircraft, and we're ready to hop into this flight. We are heading from, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, this is the beginning and ending of the entire thing here, but... It's not, oh, we're heading from Newark Liberty International to Philadelphia International. Get a nice little overview of the entire route from beginning to, to from beginning to end, but we are currently somewhere in the middle there. I'm not quite sure. We just finished up in, um, we just finished passing over New York City in the last episode. Passed over the Statue of Liberty and landed not too far away from there, so we'll see. I'm not... Not really sure. Uh, we got. We got. I think we have a few more legs to go. This is leg number seven, and I think there is either nine or ten. We saw it. I wasn't really paying attention when we were in the screen there, but that's all right. So as we always have to do every time we come into one of these episodes, we are going to have to fix our GPS because, in their infinite wisdom, the developers did not remember to set this up in a way that made it so that when you hop into a leg, the GPS automatically goes to the next. Oops, to the next, uh, to the next waypoint in your, okay, seriously, can we please, nope, nope, clear, flight plan, flight plan, go into the thing there, thank you, I, I'm not a fan of the finicky nature of the way that this works, uh, so we're looking for POI 43, and I gotta be very careful not to let my mouse move around, or it's going to go on to another control that's not going to scroll us through this. So I apologize for the tediousness of this starting out. Bear with me as we get set to that. We go direct to that waypoint and then we use the outer wheel to get to the activate and enter. There we go. Okay. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and get one notch of flaps put into here. We'll get ourselves some full power, disengage the parking brake, and get rolling down the runway there. Um, actually, once we get into the air, I do need to remember to set my CDI to GPS because I always forget that that's actually something we have to remember to do. And I should have set my takeoff trim before, but I forgot again. That's all right, we'll get off the ground here. It's taking off now. Get our landing gear up, we'll check that. Landing gear is up, flaps are up. Keto heat is on. CDI is now set to GPS. Nav mode is set to GPS. Autopilot is on. Um, yeah, don't do that, please. And then altitude is set to 1500. Vertical speed up by a thousand. There we go. Yeah, I had to manually fix that. Oops. <laughs> all right. I think I think we're all set. Uh, since we didn't get a good external view before we took off, we'll go ahead and do it now. So we'll zoom out just a little bit. Take, oop, oh, why is that? Why is that? Why are my graphics chugging so hard? Uh, and yeah, we'll look around here. Nice little view as we take off from the airport. On to our first destination. So, waypoint number one is Highland Park. In the air, head southwest, passing Staten Island and Perth Amboy to reach Highland Park on the north bank of the Raritan River. Going to be 16 miles away, about five minutes worth of flying. If you've been following this series for any length of time, you know that I generally tend to try to limit my episodes to about 30 minutes wherever possible. So since this flight is estimated to take about 25 that seems to be a pretty reasonable pretty reasonable length of flight, and I shouldn't have to put any cuts into this episode. Unless, you know, if we fly over a long body of water or something, then, you know, I'll, I'll do that. But for the most part, it's just going to be me babbling in between these waypoints because it seems like for the most part on all of the various video game series that I'm doing, I think you guys are mostly just in it to have somebody talking to you. <laughs> I know that for me, especially as I start getting older and older, um, my who I watch mostly depends on the person himself, him or herself, uh, rather than just the content that they're producing. And if they are able to find a way to engage me with their conversation as they play, uh, I tend to watch them a lot more. Uh, the video games themselves, while still very important and I want to be interested in what they're playing, it's mostly, do I like listening to them talk? 
So that's kind of what I'm trying to focus on for most of what I'm doing. Obviously, my hunting game has a bunch of cuts in it because it's, there's just a lot of dreadfully boring walking around in that game until you get to the the uh, accent parts of actually seeing an animal and uh, tracking, uh, like trying to shoot at it and doing all that cool stuff. But you know, the trucking games and my Elite Dangerous game and this game, yeah, <clears throat> can't really cut those up very well without completely destroying the trip. Because then it just starts looking like random events in some kind of a vague, like there's no context to anything that's happening. It's just, oh, all of a sudden you're in this other place here, so there you go. So I'm trying to leave as much of the journey in as I can and just fill up all the boring parts with as much conversation as I can. And hopefully you guys are enjoying that. Uh, be sure to leave a comment down below if this series, if this flight series is helping you out. We are getting towards the end of this bush trip. And unless I get some feedback uh, letting me know that you guys either really like the series and continue it or really don't like the series and would like to see something else, I'm going to assume that as long as the views keep coming that, uh, you know, you guys are interested in it. I don't know. I'm probably going to go back and record the California Dreaming uh, bush trip next because even though I've already completed it on my own time uh, I, I live in California and it's also on the other side of the country from this one so uh, we'll probably do that one next and then after that we may do like a real bush trip where we're going to I kind of want to go back and redo the Patagonia one again that was a really good that was a really good bush trip and that plane actually does have an autopilot on it so <clears throat> I like to do these bush trips that have the autopilot because it makes it so that you don't waste a bunch of time getting lost. It's really frustrating uh, to get lost when you have all this technology available to you. And the, <clears throat> excuse me, I ate recently and my, my con I'm having congestion because of it. I'm not sure why. Age, I, I don't know. The older I get, the more random things really start to bother my, my, my bodily functions. <laughs> excuse me. So, yeah. We're still continuing on towards this waypoint over here, or we didn't pass it, did we? Yeah, waypoint 43. How are we still seven miles away? I thought the distance said it was only, it was like, oh, it was 16 miles away. Never mind, I'm spacing out. Anyways, um, so yeah, I mean, I generally just try to get on here cover the points of interest as we go over and then, you know, babble as much as I can, but I get sidetracked and then I forgot what I was talking about already. So, oh well. Hopefully you guys weren't too invested in that particular line of thought. <laughs> I think I was talking about the Patagonia trip and, you know, having technology available and, oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, the, uh, the very first bush trip that was available when I first started playing this was the Yosemite, the Yosemite in the Cub, in the in the yellow uh, Z Z something Cub. I forget what it's called. Uh, and you had to fly that entire thing manually. There was no autopilot. There's no GPS. There's no nothing. It's just old style bush plane, and you had to fly the points of references, and you had to fly it manually. But you know, it's like, ugh, I don't want to fly that way. <laughs> I really don't want to fly that way. I don't mind flying manually if there's actually something to do. But when you're just flying from one thing to another and most of it is just flying just like this, there's a reason autopilot exists and it's exactly because of this right here. <clears throat> so, yeah. I don't know. I like having planes that have the autopilot in it so that we can just kind of chill and enjoy the flight and not have to spend too much time playing around with uh, pitch settings and making sure we're on track and all that other stuff. It's just, it's much more pleasant and nice and I prefer it this way. So how many legs do we have? How many points do we have in this one? So one, one, two, three, four. So four points of interest in between us and our destination at the Philadelphia International Airport. Not too shabby. The, the the legs the legs of this are a little bit longer than I'm used to. Generally, they're less than 10 miles, but we are getting outside. We are starting to get outside of the uh, you know heavily populated, lots of points of interest close together area and into where everything's going to be spaced out just a little bit more. So, hopefully, um, the flights won't go any more than 30 minutes. But there's no way to know until we do it, right? So our next point of, well, hold on, before I do that, let me, uh, let me switch out to the external camera so we can look at what we're flying over. Nice little bridge there and some, some city terrain and 
The problem with these, uh, problem with this bush trip is, is that all cities kind of look alike. So, <laughs> I don't know. What to, I don't know what to. I don't know what to say about it other than, all right, we're flying over whatever the whatever the place was. I think it was what Hillsboro or Highland Park. So, we're continuing to the southwest, following the Northeast Corridor electrified railroad line to Plainsboro. Transportation is critical within the Northeast Megalopolis. Key elements include highways, notably Interstate 95, rail lines, and of course, air routes for aircraft of all sizes and types, including helicopters. <clears throat> Very cool. So we're heading over to Plainsboro, which is another 12 or, thir or another 13 miles away. Going to take us another four minutes to get there. Not sure what else to say about that. Um, I guess I can talk about my blog. Um, I kind of... It's one of those things where I'm trying to figure out different ways of trying to build a little, I don't want to say, there's not an empire, but just just build a little self-sustaining ecosystem of creativity is kind of what I'm going for. With, uh, you know, my YouTube channel, which is kind of sort of starting to grow a little bit and a few, I mean, a few hundred more subscribers and I'll be able to start getting some of that sweet, sweet ad revenue, which will be pretty nice. Uh, but, you know, I really need to start growing some other avenues of potential cash inflow because, as any successful person will tell you, you don't want to have all of your eggs in one basket because eventually something's going to happen and it will go away. So you want to kind of have several different revolving things going on uh, that you're kind of monitoring and making sure that they are working for you. And I, uh, you know... I think my blog could be one of them, but I kind of ignored it over the last year or so because it, it just it doesn't make any money. <laughs> and I got you know you get discouraged and you want to keep trying to do things, but then you get tired of messing with it. And sitting down to write a blog post every day, while I do type very fast at 90 plus words per minute, it's just sitting down to think about what you're going to talk about and typing it all out and then having to go back and make sure you didn't mess anything up and making sure it says what you want it to say and it's just it's, it's it takes a, it takes at least as long to do that as it does to make one of these videos so i don't know it's just it's just one of those things where the the benefit that i'm getting out of it is not worth the effort i'm having to put into it but then but that was back then before I really started focusing on YouTube because, you know, the, the YouTube thing was kind of forced on me to some extent. You know, I had my, my life situation has put me in a, in, a, in a place where I don't really have anything else to do at this point. So I got to try to do something. And I started focusing on my YouTube channel and it finally started, it's, it's, you know, it's starting to grow and build a little bit. And I'm hoping I can get to the point where it's going to, you know, start making a decent little bit of money. And then if I can, you know, force myself to do the same thing with the blog, maybe I can get that to the point where I have enough of a readership that, you know, people will decide to support me. I can monetize the blog, you know, start doing some things like that so that I have a second income stream. And then, you know, I have several other creative things that I've been kind of working on over the years that I just kind of let fall by the wayside because I just didn't feel like they were worth the time and effort I was putting into them. But if I can kind of, you know, be consistent with all of those different things I'm trying to do, then maybe all of them will kind of grow into at least a portion of what I was hoping they would be. And together, I'll get all, all together, I can hopefully get the income that I need to live the kind of life I want to live. So who knows? You never know what's going to happen when you're trying to do things like this, but all you can do is try and hope for the best. But let's go ahead and hop outside the plane real quick so we can look around at the hill, the Plainsboro area as described by the Navlog. looks kind of the same as everything else, if I'm perfectly honest with you. I'm guessing this is the 95 that we're flying over, but I'm not sure. It's kind of hard to tell. But yeah, here's Plainsboro. Moving on to the next one. So, Van Siver Lake. Continue following the Northeast Corridor, pass over the Delaware River and into Pennsylvania to arrive at Van Siver Lake. There you go. We have one more stop along the way before we hit our airport that we're landing at for this leg of the trip. So it's a good thing we're in a sort of faster plane because if we were having to do this at, say, you know, 
80 or 90 knots that would that would take forever to get through this <laughs> it's the only th the only thing like i said in every one of these legs that we've done that i'm not a fan of low wing aircraft for uh sightseeing because you know you can't look down and see anything that's on the ground and then also the fact that the engine cowlings for these stick so far forward you can't see anything down to the right anyways and then this particular aircraft has one of the worst um one of the worst uh, cockpit windshields that I've ever seen in my life. It just, it basically completely removes your ability to see anything in front of you outside of this little, this little crescent moon shape right in front of you. And it's just, I don't know. I'm not a fan of it. I, I'm, a, I'm a, obviously if I was able to move my head around and look around the stanchions and stuff here, it, that would be mitigated to some extent, but whoever thought that this was a good cockpit, I, good cockpit design really needs to reevaluate their thinking because <laughs> This is not, this is not, this is not good. Anyways, enough complaining about that. I don't know what else we need to, I don't know what else I want to talk about for this particular flight. I'm kind of, I'm kind of chatted out because several of my videos involve me sitting here and just talking for 20 to 30 minutes at a time. And by the time I get to this one, I've kind of talked about everything I have an interest in. So I don't know. And I guess mostly I just want feedback from you guys. If, if, if you've been watching these videos, you know, at least a couple of them, and you are vaguely interested in following my adventures in Microsoft Flight Simulator, input is appreciated. Um, obviously, my flying will get better the more I fly. For those of you who have been providing me with uh, feedback on my flying, I appreciate it. I do actually have a private pilot certificate. I was in a Part 141 school. I uh, got my private certificate while I was there, and I was about 10 hours into my instrument uh, training when, you know, life happened and I kind of had to give it up. But, I mean, even before that, I've been doing flight simulators since I was since I was very young. So, I have, you know, I did FSX for a very long time, Flight Simulator 10. And, uh, you know, just off and on over the years, learning how to do, in I, I knew how to do instrument flying before I even went to flight school. I, I knew, I already knew mostly how to fly and it was mostly just kind of going through the motions of, you know, uh, obviously you have to sit down and learn all of the crazy amounts of information that the pilot has to know to pass all the tests and everything. Uh, but the flying part was super easy for me because I had already been doing it for 20, well, I'll say 20 years, but 10 or 15 at least by the time I had actually gotten into a real cockpit. So, uh, yeah, um, not trying to uh, not trying to ignore or devalue the advice that some of you find people are trying to give to me, and I appreciate it. Uh, just understand that your advice is going to somebody who actually knows all of this stuff, and I just I'm just super super rusty, <laughs> super super rusty. It's really diff. This is not a perish. This is this is not, this is a very perishable skill. It's not like riding a bike. You hop on it, and all of a sudden, you're, 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 it, it all kind of muscle memory comes back to you. You have to do this stuff every once in a while, and then if you don't do it for months or years or whatever it is, you try to come back to it, and it's very difficult to just hop back in and and, and, do, and know how to do all of this stuff and do it well. Very very difficult. So hopefully we're getting pretty close to our last waypoint here, right? So we're crossing over in... Oh, here we go. Uh, hold on. I'm confused. I wasn't paying attention. Where are we heading to? We're heading to 45. I think we actually have one more after this, right? 45. So we're heading into... We're crossing over the Van Siver River. And then after that, we have one more waypoint, and then we have the airport. I had some wishful thinking going on there, thinking we were much closer to the end of our route here than I thought we were, or than we actually are, but whatever. Should be turning towards our next waypoint, so I'm going to go ahead and read that one off. Well, hold on, no, I'm supposed to swap out into the external cockpit view so you guys can see the point of interest that we're flying over. So, here it is. Back in the cockpit, let's go ahead and read off the next one. Parallel the De Delaware River to Philadelphia, the center of the founding of the United States of America. A planned city from its beginnings, Philadelphia is today the largest urban area in Pennsylvania and continues to celebrate the legacy of its role in the beginnings of so many aspects of the country. 
Philadelphia is the location of the signing of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, and it is the birthplace of the United States Marine Corps, hoorah, and the United States Navy. If you have not watched any of my other videos, I did serve as a United States Marine from 2002 to 2013. Eleven years of my life was spent sir, in service of the Marine Corps and my country, um, but don't get too excited. I was just a musician. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean to downplay my service or anything, but you know, I was—I I never got deployed, or I never had to do any of that uh, really crazy stuff that a lot of the, uh, the uh, that a lot of the grunts had to do. So I have mad respect for. You know, we're all real Marines. I'm not going to call them the real Marines. I had all the same basic training that they had. I went through the same boot camp they went through. I had to re meet all the same requirements that they had to meet. It's just my daily job was much easier than what their daily job was. And, uh, you know, you have, to, you have to have a little bit more respect for that than, you know, some people might. So for those of you who served, thank you for your service, and I appreciate it. And, uh, you know... Anytime I see anything that has to go to the Marine Corps, it, it was a major part of my life. I spent more than 10 years doing it, and, uh, you know, I thought I was going to make a career of it, but medical issues happened, and I was kind of, I kind of had to, kind of had to leave, so it is what it is. You live your life the best you can. Uh, we got to make to this point here, and then after that, we still have, oh, this is 18 miles away, and then we, but it should be a shorter leg to get to the airport once we get there, so don't really need this up here anymore. We'll leave that right there pass over the waypoint here in 13 miles and then turn towards the airport get our landing done and then be done for this video so not sure what else i want to talk about right now i may actually just go ahead and put a cut in here so i don't have to keep talking this whole time as a matter of fact i'm pretty sure that's what i'm going to do because we're just going to be following this river it's going to be more of the same buildings and all of that kind of other stuff so i'm going to go ahead and wait until we get to the next waypoint we'll bring you back look at the area over there and then go land the plane see you guys in a minute all right we are getting pretty close to the city of philadelphia as you can see with the skyline out ahead so we're, couple, we're only about three miles away from our waypoint and then i'm guessing we're going to fly right over the city fortunately our airport appears to have it set up so that we can basically do an almost straight in landing for this one as i've said during each of these other flights that we've done. There is no access to air traffic control for these flights that has been disabled for these. So it's basically as if there is nothing going on in the entire world other than us. <laughs> so we're gonna fly over these waypoints. We come in for a landing. We don't have to report anything. We land on our own. And as long as we touch down on the runway without crashing like we did last time. I don't know what happened last time. If you watched the last episode and you watched me land without my landing gear down, I, I, I'm telling you, I pressed the button for the landing gear. It should have come down. It sounded like it came down because there's a loud whooshing noise, but I, I mean, obviously, I guess, I guess it's my fault for not actually checking the, for not actually checking the, 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 the lights there. But I'm just saying I pressed, I did press the button. I didn't forget to put the gear down. I did press the button that should have brought it down. And whatever reason, I, just, I don't understand because I assumed that it did because when you press the button, there you get this loud whooshing noise uh, because the gears make a lot of noise as they start disturbing the air. So it sounded like the gear was down. I pressed the button where it should have come down, and I I don't know. I don't know. The hardcore are gonna tell me, y'all, you're supposed to check the thing. Yeah, I know. I know I'm supposed to actually check and visually verify that, that the landing gear came down, but it's a simulator, and you don't take it quite as seriously as you would in real life. And you know how it is. You guys know how it is. So here we are in Philadelphia. I don't remember there being anything specific that we needed to look for. Yeah, mostly just the fact that uh, this is Philadelphia. It's a nice big city. Looks very similar to most other big cities. So not really much to talk about here. So let's get back into the cockpit. And uh, let's see, we only have about seven miles left but i'm not sure where the airport actually is it's supposed it's going to be in between the river and a little lake up there hmm i kind of wish i could zoom in because i can't tell what the water is doing over there but we still have another six miles to go i think i see an air traffic control tower 
Or that might be a water tower. I can't, I don't know. I'm playing in 1080p, so I don't have the definition that I really, I would really like to have in when I'm playing something like this. It's kind of, it's kind of difficult. It looks like an airport up ahead. That looks like an airport. That looks like the airport over there. So we're going to go ahead and turn off our autopilot. Pull back on the power. Try to keep our pitch trim where it needs to be. Is this the airport here? I think I might I think I'm going straight at it at this point, right? So we'll we'll reposition. Yeah, this is the river right here. It just doesn't look right because of the way the, the way the game is kind of rendering it compared to the what the GPS map over there is saying. That's alright. We'll come around this way. Get that view. There we go. Now I can actually see what we're doing. Um, I'm going to land on that far runway over there. So let's get our first notch of flaps in. That'll slow us down a little bit more. I don't want to pull my throttle back all the way because it's going to cause us to slow down too quickly. Do my best to line up with the runway in, in a way that doesn't really mess us up. Let's get our landing gear down. And this time I will actually check and make sure that the gears came down. All right, there we go. Now we shouldn't crash this time. And then as we line up for final, I'll bring the flaps down to landing level. Add a little bit of throttle because we're sinking a little faster than I want. I said it last time, but I feel like this plane flies very much like the jets do, where you're constantly having to adjust the throttle to maintain the, the pitch altitude that you want. Because it starts to sink, and you need to add a little bit of throttle. And if you don't keep the throttle, like not as bad as the F-18, but if you don't keep the throttle moving, you lose control of your altitude real fast. All right, let's get that second notch of flaps in now that we're, now that we're uh, lined up for the most part. Okay, no, it's sinking a little too fast. A little, all right, we'll adjust some pitch here because it is trying to, it is trying to uh, nose down too much. We're supposed to use throttle for for uh, descent rate, but when it consistently tries to nose down on you, you need to, you do need to make some slight pitch trim adjustments. my body position for braking. We are sinking a little bit too fast. I don't want to go down that fast. Come on. Just trying to really focus on getting a nice approach to the runway so we can have a nice gliding. Let's double check one more time. Yep, gears are down. <laughs> Almost there. to move the throttle a lot to make this work. Yeah. Very nice. All right, cool. Well, this is the first decent landing we've had in any of our in any of our flights really cuz, you know, I finally figured out how to work the throttle on this aircraft. But anyways, here we are in Philadelphia. Hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button so the YouTube algorithm knows that you did and sends the video out to as many viewers as possible. These videos are much more fun when uh, there's a lot more people involved. So please be sure to do all of those things that help out with video, uh, video growth or channel growth. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so now so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your video feed and you will be able to see the video as soon as it becomes available to you. Uh, channel members do get early access to all of my videos along with other perks depending on the tier that you select so be sure to click that join button below your viewer and take uh, take a look at the various benefits that will become available uh, be, will become available to you should you choose to support the channel. Again thank you very much for your time. I hope you guys have had lots of fun and I'll see you for the next one.